A hot new shopping phenomenon has taken the U.S. by storm. Savvy shoppers are snatching up smart tech and trendy clothes at prices that seem too good to be true. But behind the bargain bonanza, this rising retail rebel has a risky secret. The app has been featured by popular YouTubers like Mr. Who's the Boss and covered extensively by news outlets. In just months, Timu's app has been downloaded over 50 million times. It routinely tops App Store charts, outpacing established giants like Amazon and Walmart. Timu's listings seem almost too good to be true. $10 smartwatches, $3 socks, $1 makeup brushes with free delivery. Yet, each order is costing this company dearly. Where exactly are these impossible prices coming from? And how long can the deals last before it all comes crashing down? The shocking reality may make you think twice before clicking the checkout button. In this video, we'll explore Timu's meteoric rise and the red flags behind the rock-bottom prices. There's more than meets the eye with this $1 billion company that seemingly appeared overnight. Timu was launched in September 2022 as the latest venture of Chinese e-commerce giant Pinduoduo. Pinduoduo has become one of the largest e-commerce platforms in China, with over 900 million active buyers as of 2022. Timu has adopted an extremely aggressive user acquisition strategy to drive rapid growth in its first few months since launching. The company is estimated to be spending upwards of $1 billion on advertising and promotions to hook users. Parent company Pinduoduo employed similar tactics when it was gaining steam in China, sacrificing profit on each order to spend heavily on marketing and subsidized shipping. This enabled it to become an e-commerce giant in China almost overnight. Timu is following the same playbook in the US. They are spending billions on TV ads and digital marketing across platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Timu recently made a huge splash right out of the gate by spending $14 million on not one, but two 30-second Super Bowl commercials in February 2023. This was an unprecedented advertising spend for a relatively unknown app, but gave Timu enormous visibility right from launch. Over 100 million viewers saw Timu's ads promising shop like a billionaire during Super Bowl breaks. On top of that, Timu offers free shipping on all orders. This means they are paying out of pocket to ship items directly from China to U.S. doorsteps. How is it that Timu is able to handle all the logistics, the payments, the supplying, the delivery of all of these products with the end items still being so affordable? Estimates suggest Timu is losing $20 to $30 per order on these shipping subsidies. But Timu views this loss as an investment, not a long-term business strategy. The goal is to get you as a user hooked on the app through stellar deals, once a large user base is established, Timu can dial back promotions and subsidies. This is a proven model for customer acquisition, but risky. Timu is burning through billions in investment capital to prime the pump. If users do not end up sticking around or spending regularly, it will be tough to recoup those losses. Pinduoduo has managed to make the strategy work in China, growing to over 900 million users. However, the US market presents different challenges. Only time will tell if Timu's growth is sustainable once promotional offers dry up. Timu is able to offer such remarkably low prices in part by pressuring and squeezing the Chinese manufacturers and suppliers it sources from. Leveraging its supply chain infrastructure and manufacturer relationships in China, Pinduoduo is able to offer Timu rock-bottom prices on popular branded products compared to U.S. competitors. Timu sources inventory directly from factories and warehouses in China that Pinduoduo works with, cutting out all middlemen. This allows them to offer prices up to 70% lower than Amazon or Walmart on identical products. I mean, Mr. Who's the Boss said it best. I think what Timu must have done is cut out all middlemen, meaning that all the sellers that you're finding on this website, they are like the manufacturers themselves. Hey, this is clean. And when you have like the manufacturers of products themselves selling, they're the ones who are actually okay with taking like a 10% cut, so long as they're getting large volumes, which I'm guessing Timu can guarantee them. And then I also imagine just in the name of trying to grow a lot of market share very quickly, Timu themselves is probably willing to make a little bit less profit at the start. And then also because the company so new, I imagine that they're trying to give both sellers and the buyers the most favorable terms possible, because you want to try and make a good impression. Timu has not focused much effort on being profitable out of the gate. Their priority is acquiring users rapidly through promotions, referral programs, and social sharing of deals. 
This is the playbook Pin Duo Duo used in China to amazing success. New Timu users get $10 just for signing up. Referring friends leads to $20 credits for both sides. Gamified features like scratch-off coupons make the app addictive. Users boast about the crazy cheap prices they find in Timu shopping groups. But these cheap prices come at a cost. As one of the largest e-commerce platforms in China, Timu's parent company Pinduoduo has huge buying power and clout with manufacturers. Many factories rely heavily on Pinduoduo for a large chunk of their orders and revenue. This means Pinduoduo can force suppliers into very thin, often unsustainable margins just to remain within its marketplace. Refusing to comply often means Pinduoduo will stop listing them as an approved seller, costing them millions in lost business. With little leverage, most manufacturers capitulate to Pinduoduo's demands to keep its business. Timu sources from this same squeezed supplier base, allowing the transfer of rock-bottom factory costs to U.S. consumers. However, the result is that Chinese suppliers operate on razor-thin margins and overstretched capacity just to stay listed by Pinduoduo. This creates an extremely fragile and unsustainable supply chain. Essentially, Timu is able to offer implausibly low prices, but it comes at the cost of undermining the very Chinese manufacturers they rely on long term. So, by shipping all inventory directly from China to U.S. consumers, Timu skips importers, distributors, wholesalers, and retailers who add markup at each step. This allows them to undercut competitors dramatically while still producing margins from the factory prices. However, as we'll discuss next, this international dropshipping model leads to concerns around import laws, tariffs, and data security. A key factor enabling Timu's low prices is exploiting a trade loophole that lets it import goods duty-free. This gives Timu an unfair advantage over competitors. Timu has come under fire for potentially skirting U.S. import laws and duties in its business model. At the heart of these concerns is how Timu sources its low-cost products and gets them into American consumers' hands. Experts allege that a significant amount of Timu's inventory originates from factories in regions like Xinjiang, China, that are known to use forced Uyghur labor in poor conditions. By relying on suppliers accused of human rights abuses, Timu may be indirectly benefiting from and enabling an oppressive regime. However, the company claims it audits suppliers and will not knowingly import products made with forced labor. In addition, Timu's use of ocean freight consolidators and low-value shipment rules has allowed it to allegedly bypass tariffs and import duties that similar retailers pay on Chinese goods. Under the U.S. de minimis threshold rule, shipments valued under $800 can be imported free of customs, duties, and taxes. Timu sources cheap products from China and ships them individually to U.S. customers to qualify for this exemption. By bundling many small value items together and claiming the total shipment value is under $800, Timu takes advantage of the de minimis threshold set by customs laws. This means they can often dodge duties altogether on shipments that would be subject to tariffs if their true combined value was assessed. Amazon, Walmart, and other retailers importing in bulk cannot qualify for the de minimis exemption. They pay hundreds of millions in import duties that Timu dodges. Timu is essentially depriving the U.S. government of huge amounts of import tax revenue by exploiting this loophole at scale. It adds up to major lost duties given the volumes Timu ships. Some estimates indicate Timu has avoided tens or even hundreds of millions in duties that would generate tax revenue and protect domestic competitors. Critics argue Timu is intentionally misusing import regulations to gain an unfair, lower cost advantage over other retailers who follow the rules. Lowering or removing the de minimis threshold could seriously impact Timu's profit margins by subjecting more of its shipments to duties and enforcement. This potentially illegal exploitation of loopholes hurts other American businesses and jobs. U.S. lawmakers have started investigating Timu and advocating for reforms to close polarizing loopholes. This duty avoidance is perfectly legal currently, but has sparked backlash. The U.S. is now considering lowering the de minimis threshold to just $10. If passed, this policy change would eliminate Timu's huge price advantage from dodging duties. Having to pay duties could significantly raise prices, hampering Timu's model. For now, Timu is benefiting big time from this trade policy loophole. However, growing scrutiny from policymakers and competing retailers could put its business model at risk if the de minimis threshold is reduced.
If proven, the allegations around foreign labor practices and customs violations could open Timu up to huge legal liability and damage public trust in its brand. The company faces an uphill battle defending actions that are convenient for business but raise troubling ethical questions about global supply chains and fair marketplace competition. Timu's Chinese ownership and links to parent company Pinduoduo raise alarms for some U.S. regulators and policymakers given data privacy and security concerns. Pinduoduo does not have the strongest track record when it comes to protecting user data. The platform was caught sending users sensitive personal information back to China without consent. Pinduoduo has faced allegations that third-party programmer access built into its app enabled the installation of hidden malware to scrape user contracts, location data, texts, and call logs without permission. Cybersecurity researchers found roughly 200,000 devices had been impacted worldwide, mainly based in China and other Asian markets where Pinduoduo is very popular. Such malware could allow shadowy actors to spy on users through their phones, steal personal information to exploit for scams or identity theft, and gain access that could compromise financial accounts linked to devices. The finding represented a major privacy breach and stoked fears data was not adequately protected by the company as it should be. Pinduoduo claimed the malware was from rogue app updates not directly associated with them. However, the claims did little to restore confidence in their protection and management of sensitive customer information. While Timu claims it keeps all U.S. user data securely within the United States, its association with Pinduoduo sets off warning bells. There is fear that U.S. user data could be endangered or exploited given lax Chinese data rules. Some Chinese-owned apps and platforms have already been banned for government use at the state and federal levels in the U.S. Several U.S. states like Montana have banned the use of Timu on government agency devices, citing these security issues and an inability to ensure data sovereignty. While Timu promises a firewall between it and Pinduoduo systems, the ties and trust issues linger. Any future mishandling of data by the parent company risks dragging the U.S. subsidiary under as well. If Timu continues its rapid growth trajectory, it could face increasing barriers, restrictions, and even potential bans at the state or federal level. Lawmakers are increasingly wary of Chinese-affiliated apps considered national security threats. Timu's ownership ties to China and Pinduoduo's track record make it a target for scrutiny. Concerns around potential data privacy violations or even potential espionage could hamper Timu's ability to operate freely in the U.S. For now, it is growing fast by following Pinduoduo's playbook, but data protection concerns tied to its Chinese origins could pose major regulatory hurdles for Timu down the line. While dealing with regulatory issues, Timu is positioning itself to roll out new features that could significantly boost its profile, social shopping capabilities. Their parent company Pinduoduo became one of China's largest e-commerce platforms utilizing a social model where customers get incentives and deals when purchasing items together in groups with friends. This communal approach made shopping an interactive experience and helped expand Pinduoduo's customer base exponentially. Sources indicate Timu is building out back-end infrastructure and testing social functionality that will allow Americans to similarly save money by combining orders with their online networks. If adopted widely, it could dramatically increase customer acquisition and loyalty and compete even more directly with Amazon on price. The network effects of social shopping also make a marketplace much more viral in attracting new users. Timu aims to foster a sense of community around online bargains and gamified deals in order to create addictive shopping habits in the U.S., which has been successful in Asia. However, major concerns still linger around data and privacy as well as supply chain practices that could restrict Timu's growth plans or lead to further legal issues down the line if not addressed. Lawmakers are pushing for more transparency from the company on these issues before fully embracing their expansion. If Timu can allay regulatory concerns while launching an optimized social shopping platform stateside, it could disrupt U.S. e-commerce dynamics significantly. However, complications around its business model may continue hampering this ambitious vision in the crucial American market for the foreseeable future as investigations proceed. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching, and consider watching our other videos right here.